Welcome to the Feedback Control Workshop. In this workshop, we will address the use of PID for feedback control and demonstrate how it can be used to automatically respond to set point request and to look at how also it can be used to respond to disturbances and just how the tuning of the control loop impacts the PID response both to set point changes as well as the response to load disturbances. In this uh, workshop the uh, process that we will be using is a steam heater in which steam is regulated to a heater the uh, fluid that's being heated goes through an inner shell and uh, is measured, the outlet temperature is measured, and the uh, temperature controller, the P PID, is used to automatically regulate the uh, steam flow valve. The uh, temperature of the liquid that's being heated is a, is a disturbance to the process. In the workspace for this uh, workshop, measurement is made with an analog input. An analog output is used to interface to the valve. Uh, the process is simulated, so there's a dynamic simulation of the heater, and this includes uh, the disturbance uh, to the process. So by adjusting that, we'll be able to change that. By looking to look at the process, we can put the uh, PID into manual, uh, change its mode to manual, and in the manual mode then we can manually adjust the uh, steam valve that is providing steam to our heater. By uh, selecting the out parameter that is the output of our PID and changing that by step, then this immediately impacts the amount of steam that is going to our process. The uh, temperature that results from that then uh, begins to reflect the change of steam after some time to better view the impact of the steam flow, we can look at the chart. As we can see, at the point where the steam valve was changed by step, sometime later then the temperature starts to change and eventually starts to settle out at a new steady state value corresponding to the new steam flow input to our heater. To examine how the PID works in automatic mode, we can go back to our PID and put it into automatic and uh, by changing the mode to automatic, now the PID will automatically be adjusting our valve to maintain set point. Uh, the PID is set up where the set point automatically tracks the measurement and manual, so when we're in automatic, to get a step change, we can introduce a step change into the set point and then observe how the PID uh, um, adjusts the steam valve to get to set point. Again, to uh, better visualize the impact of this change on the uh, process and how the control is adjusting the output to achieve set point, we can look at the chart uh, for uh, the uh, process. We see here that at the point where we change the uh, set point that the valve changes uh, immediately. Uh, in response to that, we see that the actual temperature goes down and goes down to set point. To look at the impact of a load disturbance on the process control, we can change the load disturbance by step. And as we introduce a, a disturbance into the process, this is going to impact our temperature even though the valve position hasn't changed. So to correct for this, then the PID is going to have to adjust the valve to maintain set point. To examine how the PID responds to the low disturbance, we can uh, look at the uh, uh, chart and see that as the uh, inlet temperature changed, it has an immediate impact on the uh, temperature of the outlet. And to correct for that, then the steam valve has to be adjusted by the PID. To examine uh, the impact of uh, tuning on the process response, we can change the proportional gain by reducing it by 50% of its uh, normal value that we have.
I've been using in this exercise. Uh, by changing the gain uh, by 50% less, uh, we see there's no immediate impact because the control is at set point. To demonstrate the impact of the gain change, we can change the uh, set point by step and observe the control response with this new uh, gain in the PID. Uh, as we can see, as we change the set point, then we get uh, an impact in terms of the change in the output being adjusted. To look at that, then we can look at our chart. And uh, what we see is, is that the change in the valve for a set point change is now much smoother and much less abrupt than it was at a higher gain. Uh, as a result, the temperature comes to set point much slower than what we saw before where we had a higher proportional gain in the PID. Uh, with the previous gain, the uh, valve changed abruptly. In this case, we notice the valve is changing much more gradual. And this is all just due to the fact that the proportional gain is less. To examine how this uh, gain change impacted the response to low disturbance, we can again introduce a change in the uh, in disturbance to our process. Uh, as we introduce that change into our process, it has an impact on the temperature. And again, the PID is going to have to adjust the steam valve to correct for that. As we see here, when the uh, disturbance changed, then our temperature in this case changes again. And as we saw with the set point change, the response to the low disturbance is much uh, more gradual due to the lower proportional gain of the PID. So it has an impact on the response both for set point as well as low disturbances in our process. In both cases, though, the process uh, is brought back to set point, both for set point and low disturbance. It just takes a, a longer time for the control to respond to the set point or low disturbance. Uh, in this uh, workshop, then, we have demonstrated um, how PID works and how it is used to achieve set point and correct for low disturbances. We hope you have found this exercise to be helpful and hope you will use this workspace to uh, further explore.